Okay, I'm streaming. Um, I'm starting later than normal, and so I'm also not fully prepared here either. Um, so I did have three games planned, but uh, I'm actually going to cut one of the games because I'm streaming and I'm starting an hour later than normal. Um, so we're just going to cut one. Question is, is which? Um, the first game I had planned. Um, so <laughs> we're going to cut uh, Lul. Lul! Uh, and we're going to jump straight to... Do I want to go to the next one? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm going to kind of rearrange things here. I think what I want to do is actually I want to play this Singing Scars game. And then after that, we'll play Axolotl. Um, so, let's see. I need to, first of all, figure out where I'm going. Where is the? Where are these games? What have I done with these games? It should be here. It's, oh, I don't even have the... I don't even have Live Split open. Live split. Yes. Okay, we should have live split open. Now we can do singing scars. And pretty groovy tune. Okay, and then the cheap violin comes in. You know, the song was alright up until that violin came in. <laughs> alright, so I'm going to be playing Singing Scar. Thanks, Tridium, for joining. Sorry I'm later than normal. They got keyboard convig. Glad they got that there. That's better than most RPG Maker devs. Let me turn these on. How's the volume? It's a little bit loud, so of course it's in steps of 80. Not 80, steps of 20. Alright. There we go. Get that started. It's also loud in my headphones. Is it still loud for you guys? Yeah, it is a little bit. All right. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Controls. We are living in story. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, each moment we experience passing the second. It's like the page of the story. Oh. I already- a paid? The fuck is going on? <laughs> this? Yeah, not really? Oh, it's so fast. I already know why it's so fast. Sorry, that switched camera. There you go. Now you can see. I'm not even gonna bother trying to read this, it's too fucking fast. That... <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Flying at lightning speed! Eve, you're insane, you know that? I know! Well, you got a better plan? Fine! Finn, is the aircraft... Art... Artifact... Sorry, how did I get aircraft? <laughs> Finn, is the artifact ready? Yeah, I've got it right here. Guess we just passed it below. Good, it's rampage of dis destruction ends today. Remember, we have one chance to get this right. You don't have to say that a million times, Eve. We always have only one chance. Then let's not fail. All right, guys, now's the time. Jaws. <laughs> what kind of fucking name is that? Jaws. Is he a shark? <laughs> Or did they misspell jazz? 
<laughs> Jaws written by a dyslexic man. <laughs> Jaws. Make sure you fire after. I got it, Eve. Just go. Before it knows what we're up to. Is it loud again? No, I think it's just my it's just loud in my headphones. Okay, let's go, Finn. Don't let me down, Jaws. Go! <laughs> it's kind of a jank way of demonstrating that. <laughs> Those people are bigger than the fucking aircraft. Alright, here we go. Watch out! I'm not blind! <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it looks like they died while they were falling. They're dead! Oh no! Agatharos! I see it! Use the artifact now! We've got you now! And we're walking in air, I guess. Engaging threat! Look at that thing! Oh, Wrath of Wood is here. Your turn, Eve. Put it to sleep. It's green-haired, pale-faced lady. Is that what her uh, portrait looked like? This looks lit. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna burst everyone's bubble on this. So, um. I want you to kind of look at some of the detailing in the art, especially like when we're looking at the chain here. Um, okay, the, the AI art is about as bland as I expected. Yeah, it's AI art. I don't know, I mean AI art, it can produce nice looking stuff. Like if you ignore, so, like if you don't look too closely at it, you know, it looks fine. I don't know what the fuck this is in relation to the, you know, game. Um, I don't know if the dude just was like, I'm gonna pick that because it looks cool as shit and then made that the, <laughs> the fucking enemy. Or if there's actually a reason why we're fighting a robot holding a globe. We have weapon, charge, and item. What is charge? Oh, okay, we just charge. Magnetizer guards weakened allies. Counterattack 30%. He looks too happy. Look at that smile. Who are you fucking talking about? Oh, this robot? He kind of looks like one leg robot. Yeah, you're kind of right. Where does the other leg go? Yeah. Yeah. Sorrow. Halves your speed until next turn. Sleep 100%. Disables. Wakes when hit. I don't... It's too fast! It can't keep up that pace forever. Wait for its mobility to wear off. What does that mean? What mobility? Holy hell. Everything is so fucking fast. <laughs> Alright, let me explain, right? Let me explain what's going on here. I know exactly what's going on, because this is not the first time I've uh, experienced this. So, I don't know the exact reason, but I can say that it has to do with the older versions of RPG Maker MV. And it could either be this guy developed the game, like, I think it's before patch 1.5. Or if I recall correctly, I'm not sure. I guess he just never updated his uh, RPG core. Um, I don't remember exactly what patch it is, but it's pretty old. Uh, definitely well before whatever patch we're on now. 1.6 point something. Um, and back before then, um, the like animations and the speed of the logic were tied together. So, uh, basically, the game will animate as fast as, I, as fast as I can output frames, and as fast as I can output frames is 144 frames per second, which is why I enabled the counter at the top left of the screen there, so you can see just how fast the game is running. 
uh, slightly faster than two times speed. Um, so this can happen either because, like I said, they didn't update their RPG core, or uh, Yonfly's shitty fucking, uh, what is it, FPS sync for du some dumb fucking reason um, rolls back how that code works um, after the whatever patch and makes it so you can enable this. Why you'd want to enable this? I don't know. Maybe you want to create your own turbo mode in your game. Who knows? But either way, um, yeah, that's what's going on here. The game is running at a slightly faster than two times speed. Careful, don't wake it up. Well, oh well, I woke it up. Cool. Ugh, it isn't over. Your turn, Eve. Put it to sleep. I see. So, out of curiosity, if I fuck up again, will it just keep me stuck in this loop? Wow, that really reduces damage. That one Yonfly FPS plugin is a big. S you bet your ass it is. It's funny, it said careful, don't wake it up. Like you assumed I already put it to sleep. It's not asleep yet. Oh, okay. What? I didn't even win. What? Oh, so, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Thank God this game is, is flying by the fucking seat of its pants. Ha ha ha. Anyways, uh, pun not intended. Pun unintended. Uh, I haven't even started the counter. Whatever. I want to try this again. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. What even is this fucking N Media Res? Um, intro. Alright, so here's- here's what I want to see. As a dumb fucking player, is it possible for me to totally skip the tutorial? All right, so I just noticed, here's what I'm thinking. So here's what I'm thinking, right? The tutorial progressed even though I actually didn't do any damage. It seems like it's based on the number of turns that have passed. Um, that's what I'm thinking, especially because there was no detection as to whether or not I actually put the enemy to sleep. Um, it just, no matter what, the, the character said, careful, don't wake him up, just assuming that I had already put them asleep. So this charge thing, I noticed, seems to block a lot of damage. So if I just keep charging and never do anything, will I be able to just completely bypass whatever this tutorial is trying to teach me? Oh. Okay, I think he might have accounted for that. All right, all right, cool, cool. At least he accounted for that. Or, wait a minute. Wait a minute, are you supposed to fail? If I just keep charging again. Okay, alright, I think you might have accounted for it. Okay. Glad we ran our experiment. Oh. Uh, why is- why is he there? <laughs> uh, it isn't over. Alright, we'll start the timer, we'll do this for for real. I- I keep- 
selecting the wrong fucking thing because the game is running so fast. It's too fast! Locked on! Disable the field! Fire! Bullseye! Guys, I'm on my way! Let's see. What did I miss here? Dawit? Oh. The Singing Scar. Alright, anyways. What did I miss here? You get self-revive midair twice and someone shows up and saves your butt. Yep. Yeah, that seems like some questionable design. You gotta let the player die sometimes. I don't know, I was gonna say, actually, I I don't think it's a bad idea, like, if you want... There, I don't know, having, letting the player just revive right there, in front of the tutorial, I appreciate that, instead of wasting my time. I can easily imagine a lot of RPG games, it's like, if you, in fact, I'm sure I've experienced this before in the many different games I have played, where it's like, you die during this tutorial because you dare to experiment to see what you can do in the game, and then you are just thrown back to the menu you hadn't saved yet and you get to go through their whole long fucking lore dump again so i kind of appreciate that honestly just being revived in front of the the tutorial i mean if it's a tutorial though i don't know i think in my opinion but i guess it doesn't really matter but in my opinion uh, i would probably just make it you know so you can't die it is a tutorial after all to me, I think it's more it's more valuable to give the player a safe a safe space to experiment with the game's mechanics and systems um, without having to worry about you know dying and having to reset. Cassandra, please, out of my way. Stop all this. There's still time. I'm sorry, Eve. Why? Why do you have to do this? There's no choice. I have a promise to keep. Even if it means risking the lives of everyone. I don't care. You know I have to stop you. Heh. <laughs> you can try. No matter what, you cannot release the Destroyer onto this world. <coughs> I'm choking on my own spit. So, this is it, huh? I, I can't let you do this. I have no fucking clue what's going on. Why is the fucking screen black? Eve! Eve! Oh, come on, Eve. Wake up, damn it. I'm fine. Yeah, this, this sprite... I mean, come on. You couldn't even get, like, a better fucking gradient to use in the character creator or character generator. Like, this is like nuclear green, and then she kind of has like a foresty green here. And she has a normal skin tone here, and then she's ghostly white here. What up with that? Not sure how we survived that. Thanks to me, of course. Really, I didn't see you jumping off a gunship. We did the hard part. Anyone could have done that. Is this Eternal City? I think so. Why are we here? Apparently, Agatharos fell into this place. It crashed into a building up north. We need to make sure it's destroyed. Because that was the OG sprite before AI. Well, I mean, he updated the whole fucking game with AI. I mean, you'd think that he'd at least take time to update the fucking sprites, too. Sure, you don't want a few more minutes. You were in a pretty deep sleep. I mean, I had to yell. You can always rest in the gunship, Eve. A memory. Never mind. Don't worry about me. Let's go. Oh, okay. Arcane Hourglass. Hope we don't need to use this. Can save our life. Yeah, let's avoid that situation. What does it do? It would have been nice instead of all that dialogue you explained what it fucking did. Oh, is, is that our inn? It's the fucking helicopter? Alright. 
I kind of appreciate the originality. Well, that's one way of blocking a door. Interesting how ancient exactly, at least 10,000 years back. Incredible, everything still looks pristine. Who or what is doing the cleaning of these machines? Not at this con I touched one door, shut up! <laughs> Jesus. Whoops, dropped something, sorry. Cassandra's music box? Leave it behind already. Maybe you're right, who knows? We, never mind. <laughs> you block that one tile. Alright, we got on map encounters. That's definitely appreciated. Those are slimes, huh? Come on, he couldn't even recolor the slime to be purple. Like, I don't expect him to. I don't think it would be too hard to just throw, like, some brown, you know, spackles on the regular slime, but whatever. I mean, he couldn't at least recolor the slime sprite to be purple like this? I think even that would go pretty far. Jazz! I mean, Jaws! Remember that attacking monsters angers them. If we push one over the edge, they become impossible to hit. Before that happens, let me stun them. Alright, so... Who? Eve needs to stun them? Wait, what does his attack do? Static? Doubles energy... Doubles... Those things. Energy damage taken? Huh? Man, this is like... Deciphering like fucking hieroglyphics. What the fuck am I reading? This is like symbols and percents and th and not complete sentences. I cannot fucking parse this. Am I? Sorry, I I'll admit I took a shot before this stream. It's been a hell of a week. So sorry. Has that alcohol already hit me? Am I just too fucking drunk already to? Yeah. Right. Okay. It's not me. Like. There's, there's not a full sentence here. I'm trying to parse whatever this fucking means. Sword. Static. Static 50%. Doubles. These things. Energy. But energy and, like, damage taken? Yeah, I don't get it. Sure, whatever. We'll use it. She said stun, right? But she doesn't have a stun. She has sleep, but sleep and stun are different things. At least... I mean, I get in terms of video games, an enemy who is asleep is effectively stunned, but they... It's... Not the same thing. Oh, I didn't mean to charge. Whatever. So, alright, looks like I didn't need to think too much about that. <laughs> Sorry, alright, I'll go ahead and um, give some insight for my viewers. Tritium probably already knows. So, this is um, a user who... Um, I, I was kind of aware a little bit of his game, like, before downloading it I, I I wanted to download it just to see if um, the things he talks about um, you know ho hold water basically and uh, one of the things I know he talked about and at least I'm pretty sure it was him he talked about how uh, he wanted to make sure that his combat was never like focused on a like you know it's like a pretty dominant strategy in JRPGs and most JRPGs where you focus on a single target to, to kill it. Focus all of your actors on that one target until it's dead, and then you can switch to a different target. 
So there's that, and then also I know that he wanted people to read his skills more. So I'm kind of going into this game with a little bit of a bias already, right? Um, I see I've accidentally already entered combat. Um, so because of that preconceived bias, I was, I think I was kind of overthinking this. It so far actually to me seems like there's no more thought than just use the skill that's been provided. Now, I remember this dude complaining about players not getting his game. So if I have to make a guess here, if players are not getting his game, um, I could chalk that up to maybe it being that it seems like the intro teaches you that this game doesn't actually require too much thought which then throws players off later on in the game when suddenly maybe you throw enemies that do require a lot of thought. It just kind of contradicts what they were taught from the very beginning of the game. That's just my guess, that's my hypothesis. I'm throwing that out there. We'll see if that holds, in, if that holds true or not. We'll continue. Charge restores the stamina. We need to... Charge restores the stamina we need to attack. There's also a defensive stance. If you time it when several monsters are enraged, you can reduce a lot of damage. Okay, when do I know that they are enraged? That's the thing. Is there... Will it show me? Will it apply some sort of, like, visual cue that they're enraged? And does that mean... I need to, um... Just, I don't, I don't know. Let's just focus them down. Oh, okay, maybe that's enraged. I'm not sure. It's an angry face, and then I saw the numbers increase, so I think he's angry, maybe. Oh, but I don't have any, oh, I see. Oh, that's so stupid! Oh, you're, you're telling me you're telling me your characters become useless when you run out of stamina? So you have- you don't even have a basic attack. You don't even have a basic attack, so it's like if an enemy has like a sliver of health left, but you also have no stamina, you waste a turn by charging. Come on, man. I get that like, basic attacks suck. Like. There's, you have like two different problems where you have a, which happens more often than not uh, in a lot of RPG Maker games, where you have your basic attack that just seems to be the dominant strategy. And then sometimes you have your basic attack that is so pitiful that it's like, why do you even have it? Except this game is like the perfect example of a game where it makes sense to have that pitiful attack. It's like in first person shooters, in a lot of first-person shooters, you get a really pitiful punch. Why do you have that useless punch? Uh, it's because if you don't have any fucking ammo, at least you can do something to defend yourself. Okay, I need a charge for him. At least the charge actually restores a lot, though. I'm, I'm thankful for that. It's locked. At least it just says it's locked and doesn't give me, like, you know, a paragraph of... Just as I was saying, paragraph. It's a disintegration device useful for harvesting monster parts. I just have to land the killing blow with it. Monster stuff sounds like a waste of time. It's not. Why is that? You keep forgetting, Jazz. This isn't like your world. There aren't men any shops left for you to buy what you need. All right. That was some clunky dialogue. All right. Thanks for joining, Trid. So do I equip it? What is it? 
anyway, yeah. Doubles item drop chance for this battle if one enemy is killed by this weapon. Okay, interesting. So the weapon actually gives you your skill. I don't hate that. That's pretty cool. Um, but that means each character only has one skill? I'm assuming they can only have one weapon, right? I sure hope that expands later on because then you're basically deciding whether to charge or to use your weapon. It's not... Um... Boy, I sure hope I'm wrong about that. I sure hope later on you actually unlock more skills. Um, why do I want more drops if there's no shops? I don't really recall. It doesn't matter. I'm... I'll just equip the damn thing. Fuck it. Have anything around the sides? Um, got a lot of enemies. Did I just go into this? Can I go in? No, of course it's locked. <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, I guess you don't have to make the big centerpiece like somewhere you explore but it's just so weird to draw so much attention to this door and then it'd be just more set dressing sure hope you like come back to it later guys don't worry if i fall in battle just keep fighting i'll recover afterwards anyways better not waste those hourglasses right Orc is here! Oh, of course, we have to charge. What do you mean I have to charge? Huh? Who is using it? Jaws. He has 20. He has that state, but I thought that was the rage state. I don't get it. Alright, fine. Just do whatever. Wait, he has Magnetizer and Salvager? Wait, so does equipping the weapon teach you the skill, but you don't... Huh? That makes no fucking sense to me. What? I guess, hooray, we have more than one skill finally, but... You mean... Equipping the weapon permanently teaches you that weapon skills, so you could equip the weapon, learn the skill, and then swap back to your previous weapon. What a clunky fucking system that is. I kind of liked my idea better where the weapon is the one that gives you the skill. I mean, obviously it's flawed because you'd only ever have one skill, but I don't know, maybe they'd give you magic or something later so you have more skills or I don't know maybe the weapons would upgrade to add more skills I don't fucking know but either way it's just like I liked that better this is so weird you just permanently unlock the skill when you equip the weapon huh level up You're not hurt real bad, save those rations. Our bodies are resilient enough to heal up minor damage just by walking around or spending a turn in battle. Right, he's got a charge. Cool. Sealed rack. 
Sessions, oh boy. It's locked, of course it is. <gasps> this machine gun is heavy. Then you get a... Yep. That's not a machine gun, that's a sniper rifle. <laughs> Looks like this game plays at double speed, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, already kind of went over that. Uh, oh, my uh, FPS counter changed. There we go. Now we got it back. Yes, sir. I would brought up the FPS counter earlier to show off that uh, the game is in fact running at a little bit over double speed because my monitor is uh, 144 hertz. It seems like uh, either they have Yonfly's useless plugin or they never updated their RPG core after the update that fixed that problem. So, these weapons do exactly the same, other than teach you the skill, but it permanently unlocks the skill. So, all I need to do is equip it, and then unequip it, and then I have the skill, right? Although, this is an RPG Maker game, and I have a feeling it's not quite so simple similar. Someone didn't do their homework? Yeah. Um, I have a feeling it's not quite so simple. I feel like I need to, like, refresh the character, so likely I might need to exit the menu entirely. Uh, we can't see their skills. That's really kind of annoying. There's no skills menu? Um, alright, so... I'm going to equip that weapon. I don't know why, like... Alright, let's just... Let's go into another fight. Come here, damn it. Oh, they keep increasing the monsters. Monster counterattacks. Monsters counterattack when they're enraged. Not only that, they can strike at us multiple times. I'll handle them. Jaws, you must hit the calmer ones instead. Well, let's see about that. Yeah, see, I still have both skills unlocked. So, let me try switching weapons next battle and see. Are all the weapons bird related? Maybe for the gun. Because Salvager and Magnetizer certainly isn't. Well, so far I haven't really needed to worry about their rage thing. <laughs> Seems fine to just focus a single enemy. It's a fuel rod used mainly to power automatons. You mean robot food? Here, have a sip. Cute. Alright, so now I'm going to try equipping this dude back with his old weapon. Because they do exactly the same stats. What's up with that? So if it permanently unlocks a skill, then like... Let's just see. Yeah, it permanently unlocks the skill! <laughs> so like... I have a feeling all I need to do is just equip the weapon to get the skill, and then I completely unequip it. That's such a jank fucking way to like, unlock skills. And I get this sneaky suspicion that that's not how it's intended to be. I really kind of get this feeling that maybe the dev might have not thought about that. But no, then that would mean they probably would have never playtested this game at all. Maybe they were aware of that. Did they not realize that was just a really jank? <laughs> it's so weird, it's so jank.
But it really seems like I don't really need to know what's going on. It seems like I can just hold the attack button and it's all good. So this isn't a perfect gem of a game then. No, I don't think so. Look, that enemy almost killed that dude. It's almost like I might have needed to actually pay attention to the... the mechanics of the game. Almost. But also, they automatically get revived at the end of combat, so it's kind of like... It's not even really attrition, so... Like, if they die, no big deal, as long as I got other members alive. I better save, though, before this game pulls out some fucking bullshit. It's closed. Okay, that's not where I go. Then where do I go? This. Looks like an old military installation and security system might be active. Be on your guard. Okay. Damn, it went right through the wall. No jump mechanic. Despair, this should calm the more troublesome foes. Why don't we just kill them? Sheesh, you and your stupid questions. Sheesh, you guys not shutting the fuck up. Remember, angered enemies are dangerous to attack. They are ready to counter our hits. With this, I can make sure they never enrage. That last paragraph is like all that need to be said. All right, here's a new enemy type. Let me see what you do. Stop moving around, damn it. Wait, it was a dude. Where's the dude? Did I bump into the wrong enemy? Oops. Because the game is running too fast, I accidentally charged. On everyone. Here, you can put him to rest or something. I don't know. I don't know if you... If you ask me, it feels like this doesn't really do... Like... It doesn't make a big difference. Uh, nope, that was the dude that was running around. Where is the dude? There is a robot and two slimes, but no dude in that party. Yeah, see that? That's a dude. And that's the same troop. You know what? I'll give him this. I don't hate the idea of this, like, rage mechanic on paper. The execution so far has yet to impress, but the idea... The fuck is that bottle of paint? <laughs> yeah. Like, the execution is terrible. I don't hate the idea. To me, it feels like not something that should be your whole game's central mechanic, but like, if there was a couple, if there was an enemy type or something, I could see that. And like, you know, an enemy that basically has like a, don't 
don't focus on me mechanic, you know? Don't focus me down, take me out slowly one at a time. You throw in the party with some other enemies, and then you just, like, attack him one time, and then you focus on another enemy. But again, I don't know if I would make... Look at how much talking there was for whatever the fuck that was. Um, but again, I, I wouldn't make that the central mechanic. Oh, we got another gun. Okay. So I'm going to actually refresh this whole screen to unlock the skill, because I have a feeling this game is too jank to just update the skills right away. Oh, actually, this gun straight up just does more damage. Never mind, I'm not going to change the weapon. Well, that looks like maybe a switch. <sighs> Did that do anything? Obviously not. Wait, I think I heard a gate open. A gate? Yeah, like, every battle is that mechanic. Yeah. It, it, it's... I don't hate... I don't hate it, but it's a gimmick. So, it's like, I cannot see a whole game being centered around that. See this paint thing again. Yeah, there we go. It's like a Roomba. Not really a Roomba, but like a robot vacuum, but with paint. Interesting. Paint gun mosquito. <laughs> Something like that. So I, I think I see why this is pretty thoughtless. Alright, I, I, I got it now. So here's what's happening. So the the whole, uh, whatever, rage thing from focusing on a single target, um, that also applies to the characters, the player characters. So, props here, um, they're consistent with their rules. If the enemies can get that state, so can the player. Cool. The problem is it sort of makes it autoplay itself, because basically you're gonna do more damage what the fuck? Dude, it's from Splatoon. <laughs> so, um... You're gonna do more damage the more enemies focus on your character. Um... You don't really have a lot of control over that. But I did notice that I was getting, like, stacks of four of that state. And... At that point, my dude would counter for basically the entire health bar of the enemy. Um, so I think naturally based on luck, um, the game will play itself. Um, which also makes me wonder... I don't know, I think enemies hit hard enough that you couldn't just have a single character. But there is sort of an interesting natural outcome of that, is that as your characters die... The enemies have less characters to focus on, and therefore 
your you can build stacks of rage faster. Um, but I do think enemies might hit too hard to just like have a single party run. But I do think like if you could just get the like I don't know if you got some sort of busted uh, gear build. You could probably just tank a whole bunch of damage, build up a bunch of stacks, and then completely wipe the enemy. I don't know. It, it's it's a weird mechanic. Um, I feel like, as much as I appreciate the rules being applied to both the player and the enemy, I feel like by applying it to the player, it makes the game way too easy. Because all of your, all of your heaviest damage is only going to be the result of the enemies doing damage to you, right? So, basically, I'm just outputting skills until I build up stacks. I don't know, there's just, it's weird. It's not, it doesn't feel very well thought out. We're at 35 minutes, and I don't know, um... Oh my god, Is how much talking is there going to be? You pick up an item and then it's like they gotta talk forever about that item. Just explain what the item does. Or just say you got it and then check your menu. There we go, now I can draw enemy aggression. So we're out of time on the game, but I'm this is this weird morbid curiosity that I have. Can I actually make it to a boss or something? I'm gonna try to avoid a lot of the battles. Oops. There it is. Agatharos. Uh, whatever. Oh shit, you moron. Shut up, you fool. It was... Blah. It's this thing again. Alright. So it's a single enemy. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry about that. Um I don't know, just charge. Oh wait, no 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 no. This one? Yeah, despair. Super love this eva evasion skill that he's spamming. Here's the other thing too, right? I meant to say this, is that... I don't think he has, like, competent AI in here. Yeah, it's the Robo dude again. Um, I don't think he has competent, competent enough enemy AI to really, like... Even, like, here's the thing. Like, you're basically left up to luck as to what characters... Player characters get the rage thing. And... I don't know, it's like, this this enemy here is just spamming his evasion skill. There we go. Like, here with this boss, like, what am I supposed to do? I guess I can put it to rest, but then I just wait while it's, like, sleeping? Here, I'll tell you what, I'll actually have a strategy. Um, I'll draw the dude's aggro. And he didn't attack the guy that drew the aggro? Oh, 
two of them died. Here. What, do we, what else do we have for items? Stores 50 stamina to a robot? <laughs> At least you're not falling through the sky at a million FPS. Yeah. Sure. Focus on that dude. Do I not have a heal item? I guess not. Okay. I'm gonna discharge. Oh, this dude's kinda good, so... I'll let him do his thing, and I don't know, if he can just charge some more. The fucking evasion skill. It's so obnoxious. Like, what do you want me to fucking do? Just sit here and charge? Here. Go to sleep. I didn't mean to charge. Oh well. That's okay, he did his stupid evasion attack. Skill, whatever. How can anyone sleep with this epic music wailing? <laughs> Not me, sir! Oh, I'm just gonna hold down spacebar and we'll see what happens. Oh, never mind, we'll get stuck there. Dude, it feels super good when you waste your fucking stacks of rage on the stupid miss. Oh yeah, that's a good feeling. Super cool. This is thrilling. I think I've seen some mobile games that are like this. Oh no, I gotta I gotta do some input. Oh no, I'm charging. Oops. Well that seemed cheap. He did that same fucking skill three times in a row. Anyways, here. Wake up. Oh uh, well, we're gonna die. I just don't care, this stupid fucking... It's... Oh, he died! Oh, okay, alright, cool, never mind. Strats! Strats, yo! All up here, man! That was brutal, is it over- Dude, that was such a stupid fight! Holy shit, man! The stupid, like, dodge skill... That just, like... Why? It, what an obnoxious fucking skill to have! Like, oh yeah, I'm just- you just can't do any damage to me for one turn. By the way, I can spam the skill all the time. It does nothing but just waste time. Like, I guess I could get it... Maybe if he may- maybe used it occasionally? Cause like, yeah, like I was saying, like... Oh man, it feels really shitty when you waste your- your rage skills, but it's like, the game doesn't give me anything else to do but charge. I don't know, it's... It's just... It's just so fucking stupid. Alright, I'm done with this game.
Hello, fellas. What I missed? You just missed the whole game that you requested. Nice timing. <laughs> nice timing, man. Nice timing. Um. Also, this is in the wrong order. Hang on. Let's um move this there, and then sorry, Lul, for like the fifth fucking time, Lul's getting bumped from the <laughs> from the top. I've been meaning the stream. What was that garbage? That was the game you wanted me to stream. It was fucking terrible, dude. Um, anyways, as I was saying, apologies to Lul. I've been trying to stream Lul for probably five weeks now, and uh, it keeps getting bumped from, from its slot. Oh well, one day we'll play Lul. Anyways, Polish is definitely a nun. It does get the point for accessibility, believe it or not. Clarity. No, I had no fucking clue what the skills are doing. Not that I needed to know what they were doing. I could just hold spacebar. Balance. No, I could just... Sorry, that was a one. It should be zero. Ninety. Oh my gosh. Cool game, one out of ten. <laughs> Balance is a no. I could just hold spacebar. <laughs> Unique identity. Uh, not when it's oops all RTP. Also, I guess that's maybe the rule now. I'll probably forget this in the future, but um, uh, I guess that's gonna be the rule is that if you use if you rely heavily, I'm gonna make I'm gonna clarify that. If you rely heavily on unedited AI art, um, yeah, then the unique identity is gonna be zero. So there we go. It is it is a it is a two. Which, surprisingly, is not the worst score, but then again, that's... My game isn't... Sorry, my body is not prepared. Um, gosh, I almost want to launch it again just to show you. It's... It's not good. There's, like, a semblance of good ideas there that have been executed very poorly, and I think that's what makes it hurt even more, is because it's like... You fucking had it! You had, like, a good idea, and you fumbled it so bad. Yeah, at least try to match up the battlers with the map enemies. Yeah, no kidding, like, he couldn't even be fucking asked to edit the map sprites. I knew that guy was just talking crap and didn't know how to make a game. Oh boy! I... yeah. Yeah, I... I think he's really quite full of it. Um... I don't know, it wasn't really impressing me. Like... Alright, let's, let's be reasonable here. Like I said... There's a semblance of maybe good ideas in there that have just been executed poorly. So maybe he is the quote-unquote idea guy, but maybe not really the game dev guy. I kind of liked his idea that he was going for. You, I hope that you'll watch the archive so you can get the full taste of it. But um, I like the idea that he has this, like, you get, like, your skills are tied to your weapons. So whatever skills you can use. By the way, I'm not going to say this is original. I think I've seen plenty of other definitely MMOs that have done this. Like, I think Guild Wars 2 did this as well. But, anyways, I'm not talking, I'm not saying that it's original, but I'm just saying that I do like the idea in the game, is that the skills that you have are tied to the weapon that you have. The problem is in the execution where when you equip the weapon, it just permanently unlocks that weapon's skill. So you don't even need to keep the weapon equipped, which completely removes any sort of thought or strategizing around what weapons you equip on your character. And of course, it's still... I didn't even mention this while I was um, actually streaming that, that the game, um, while I was playing the game. Um, but also, here's another funny fact about that, is that the weapons still have RPG stats, which means even if... Even if the skills that were tied to them, um, like, the skills were tied to the weapon, they weren't permanent unlocks, it'd be really annoying to have to give up a good skill just because another weapon that might have a shitty skill, but has better stats on it, right? 
Um, yeah, so... I don't know. That whole system is, like, fundamentally flawed. I don't know. I'd probably make, like, if I was doing that... First of all, speaking of Guild Wars 2, um, you get, like, four skills for whatever weapon that you equip. And I think I'd probably do something like that, where, like, one weapon would have, like, four different skills tied to it. Maybe not four, but... The other thing that I'd pitched while I was playing the game was that maybe the weapon would, like, level up. And as it, you would level up the weapon, it would unlock more skills. Um, so I would probably do something like that. The second thing is, is I would probably make the weapon your skill thing and then tie stats and stuff to other things. Like your armor, or maybe armor is a little bit too opaque. Maybe you'd want to make it, like... Artifacts or whatever they mentioned artifacts in the game so that would fit that game's lore is you could have like artifacts that would like Boost stats or whatever doesn't matter either way I would make weapons not Have RPG stats on it because then you're not having to choose Weapons solely based on their stats Instead you're picking weapons based on what skills they have tied to them so just my my thoughts on that. So that's what I'm saying is like at, at its very fundamental base I like the idea. However, basically everything about the execution is bad. Um what else did I like? Oh yeah, the the main me battle mechanic. It's more of a main battle gimmick. I I'm not even going to go over the whole thing again. You you're going to have to watch the the first part of the stream. Basically, you have this rage mechanic the, that is intended to prevent you from focusing down a single enemy. I don't hate it in concept. Basically, as they get more angry from you focusing on a single enemy, the more, like, combos that enemy can do. I don't hate it, but the execution, once again, is poor. Um, it's also more of a gimmick than a full game mechanic. I cannot imagine a whole game being based around that single mechanic. It's not interesting. It's a fun gimmick. But not not a full game's worth of interest or, or depth there. So yeah. Oof. What did you say? Oh, I plan to do something of mine. Do something. I plan to do that with something of mine in the future. There's curse weapons that all teach you skills, but you have to swap them out. Yeah. I just would make sure that you don't tie those weapons to, like, RPG stats, because then it's like, well, I could pick these weapons that have these cool skills on them, but then that weapon over there, I literally set an alarm to see, just to see this stream. <laughs> Man, I feel kind of bad, too, because you're the one that requested to see me play this game. I'm not gonna launch it again, man. You're gonna have to watch the archive. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted. The reason why I said that is I'm almost tempted to to launch it again just to show you. But uh, nah, nah. We got other things to move on to. I started late today as well, so um, I don't really want to. Uh, even though I've only played one game so far, I don't really want to make this stream uh, as long as they usually are, um, because otherwise I'd be up way too late. Anyways, um, I'll give more thoughts later. Do that. Um, so I guess next we'll just move on to Axolotl. Um, I will, I'll go ahead and mention that I guess this is sort of my just chatting section. Um, first of all, um, pour one out for the RTP boys. I'm not even gonna, like, title the fucking stream, you know, huge RTP drama or whatever. Um, so for the just chatting section, oh, we got to put on some music, don't we? Um, first of all, thanks to WooTBM for even bringing this to my attention, although it's um, Orc and Mr. Orc and uh, D7's podcast. I've mentioned them before. Um... I mentioned those folks before on this stream. First we had some beef, then 
they then we made amends and then um, I streamed uh, a dev getting angry at them and I defended them because the dev was just so incredibly wrong. Anyways, um, so I'm bringing them up here to say pour one out for them. I'm not actually going to pour this out other than into my actual gut, so I'll pour it out into my gut. RT bo RTB boys are one short. Um, uh, seems like uh, one of their members has resigned for stupid reasons. A lot of drama. I don't want to go over it, but it's dumb. So, uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to RTP, you guys should go, go, go watch it. It's not quite the same kind of thing as we got going on here, but it's pretty similar. It's covering RPG Maker games. Now it's just a two-member crew instead of a three-member crew. Uh, I only wanted to briefly mention that. Not worth touching on it too much more. Um... The other thing I wanted to mention is Axolotl, before I even jump into this. So Axolotl is kind of special. I had actually mentioned probably about... Uh, good, at least I still have the rest of the stream to watch. Yes. Um, I mentioned this probably about like two... Maybe three months ago. I don't remember when. Um, but I mentioned that I wanted to start occasionally checking out like actual commercial games and I would actually buy those commercial games um, and play them on stream. The reason is is that uh, generally these commercial games are games that are they're not they're not just commercial games as in like someone's asking money for them. Sorry, I should say popular indie games. Um popular commercial indie games. Uh, and the reason is, is because, uh, I think there's a lot of people out there who are probably interested, um, in opinions on these games, and so I think it's beneficial to all parties involved here. Um, it may bring some more attention to my channel while, uh, sharing some opinion with some folks who are wondering, uh, who are looking for some opinion, um, while also possibly giving feedback to the devs, depending on how big the game is, like my feedback may be completely meaningless and it would just be thrown into the sea of other feedback. Um, we're starting pretty small today. Um, I did actually buy this game, Axolotl. Um, it was on sale, I do believe, and it was about $15. So I'm not, you know, we're not really reaching the, the fucking skies here with the budget. Um, however, the reason why I picked it up, it's actually, although it has a lot of reviews relative to most other, like, you know, games that I play on this channel, um, it's still relatively small, so hopefully the devs may still, uh, watch my feedback, possibly. Um, I think at the time when I picked it up, it had about 370 reviews on, on its store page. And there was a lot of games I wanted to play, but I specifically picked this game, besides the fact that axolotls are pretty damn cute animals. Um, besides that fact, um, I picked it because it was within my budget, and it also had very few reviews, relatively speaking. Um, which, by the way, uh, Blue Blade of Fate, Mr. RCX, since now that you're in the, the Discord, which by the way, you guys can join the Discord, it's it's down. It's down in the description, I do believe, the link to it. Um, I had mentioned that I had been browsing Steam and realized what a fucking gold mine Steam is for <laughs> shitty RTP <laughs> games that cost $25! <laughs> Uh, that is exactly how I discovered this. Uh, <laughs> is because I was looking for games, I set my budget to $25. And actually, that's kind of like the hard cap on it. I'm really trying to put a soft cat on, cap on the budget at around $20. But if a game looks particularly good, I'd be willing to go up to $25. But it's gotta look great, you know? Um... So anyways, I went to $25, browsed by RPG, um, and then sorted by newest. And that's how I 
discovered this game. And that's also how I discovered just a rich treasure trove of just delusional devs, delusional RPG devs who are uploading oops all RTP fucking games for 25 fucking dollars. Holy shit. <laughs> Every time Noah said twenty-five dollars, I had to do a mental spit take. Twenty-five dollars! It's nuts! What are these fucking devs thinking? There are so many good games you can get for twenty-five dollars. Let's let's just check that real fast. Let's just check that. What can we get for twenty-five dollars? All right, so we're just gonna go to. I know you can't see Steam right now. Just hang on a moment. We're just gonna go here. We haven't searched by any category or anything, and we're just gonna narrow the price down to twenty-five dollars. Sorry, two two thousand five hundred yen. You can get Grand Theft Auto Five. <laughs> All right, let's just start. Sorry, there's gonna be a lot of good games that you can get. Stardew Valley. Uh, let's remove um, free-to-play games. Because there's going to be a bunch of those. Because, like, Black Desert is there. You can get Terraria. But, sorry. You can get you can get Ace Combat right now. Because it's it's hugely discounted. Holy hell, that's a hell of a deal. Um, anyways. What? You can get Tiny Tina's? Look, you can get you can get a fucking Borderlands game. I, I, actually, Tiny Tina's is not that great, though. But, yeah, For fucking $20, it's a pretty good time. Um... But anyways, let's just sort by, uh, newest. Or, uh, wait. Yeah, newest is we're gonna come up with a bunch of garbage, actually. Well, whatever, let's, let's do it. Release date. Yeah, I don't, um... Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know about that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> this, this is a bunch of garbage in here. Um, but anyways... Hell yeah, like, you, you fucking charge $25, you got some stiff competition. Uh, user reviews, there we go. I don't know what Endless Mondays is, but it's, it's highly rated. It only has 604, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You can get Doki Doki Literature Club, I think that game's free, right? This is the supporter pack or whatever. <laughs> One of the best Ace Combat games of $25 for something I can barf into existence in an hour. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you can get Portal 1 and 2. You can get the Portal Bundle. You can get Vampire Survivors. You get all this good stuff. You can get so much. You can get multiple games for $25. There's some good games that are like $10 here. All right, so anyways, so here's the thing with these commercial games. I don't want to have to refund them, but basically, I'm, I can't also always spend money on games. I'm trying to save money, honestly. There's been a recent personal event that has put me in dire straits, I guess you could say. I mean, I've gotten out of it. Technically, I, I'm over the worst of it, but we're not out of the, the woods yet. Um, so, you know, I can't just spend money on games that I probably won't like, or it, I might like, but not like enough to play more. I just can't do that regularly. So, I may be more willing to refund these games than I normally am in the past whenever I've purchased a game for these streams. Um, I try not to do that because I do realize that um, can heavily affect um, developers when you do that. Um, but yeah, uh, those are, if I do refund the game, it obviously would go right back into my Steam wallet and therefore I could just put that same money uh, back into whatever the commercial game is that I play next time. So, um, with that being said... Let's pause the music, and here we are with Axolotl. It's a uh, AK Axolotl. Axolotls are cute. All right, Axolotls are cute, and so oh.
There we go. Two Awesome Studio. Play stack. Oh, F mod. F mod is for cool, awesome sound design, so I hope there's uh, good sound work in here. Sometimes we collect anonymous player data to make our game better. Oh. That's weird. So they're invasive with their game. By choosing accept, you're authorizing PlayStack and 2 Awesome Studio to collect and process your player data as well as your history, log, login data such as IP address. Your data is only processed to enhance the gaming experience. What the fuck is an axolotl? How do you not know what a f what the fuck an axolotl is? Did I? I'm pretty sure I accidentally closed out of. I'm uh, not accidentally. I'm pretty sure I somehow closed out of. Um. Uh, fucking live split. I remember myself uh clicking exit on it. Why did I do that? What's wrong with me? <laughs> okay. Anyways. What's an axolotl? Let's axolotl. They're cute little amphibians. Here we go. Gasp, a real video game? Wait, what? <laughs> um, yeah, data scraping. Um, it's a mudkip, yes. It, actually, yes, it is. I do believe Mudkip is based off of an axolotl, so you are correct. Um, yeah, data scraping. It's pulling a lot of uh, data from the system. Um, now, I know they say it's just to enhance the gaming experience, but this is the world we live in where we have people who are saying that it's to enhance the experience, but they're actually selling off all your data to data brokers, so I don't know how I feel about that. They may say that, but I don't trust people in the year 2023. Also, my <laughs> yes, you're right about that. Axolotls never existed until Minecraft came uh, added them in an update. If you do not wish to have your anonymized data collected, please turn off analytics and settings menu. Opt out! Still sketchy as fuck, but... Right on. I mean, I'll give them this, right? Okay? Let's, uh... Sorry, I need to... Move that. There we go. Um... Alright, so I'll give them this. I can tell you there's probably a number of games that just dump that information into like... I think you can have Steam just like pop up like a little message box like here's the EULA. And then it's, you know, like 10,000 words long. No one's gonna fucking read it because it's just, a, you know, miles and miles of legalese that no one can understand unless you're a fucking lawyer. So everyone just clicks accept on it. And they could have buried that information in there if they wanted to. So, to give them benefit of the doubt, um, at least they put that front and center when you launch the game instead of burying it somewhere where no one will probably fucking read it. Now, this music sounds like it's rocking out, but I can barely hear it. I gotta turn this up. It is rocking, man. Screen shake, camera focus on aim. And they got rebindable keys, very nice. Alright, let's play it and start the timer. Axel <laughs> mode, axel little mode. We're gonna go axolotl mode. Somewhere in the observable universe lives an extraordinary creature known locally as the axolotl. These aquatic salamanders live a free and peaceful life 
and with their bellies full and no natural predators in sight, it's easy to rest by the warmth of the campfire. However, letting your guard down can come at a great cost. This axolotl has slept through the entire incident. With little time to think about their lost children, their sole motivation is the desire to feed. A full axolotl is a happy axolotl. Oh, oh dear. Axolotls can excuse stolen children, but they draw the line at stealing food. Someone is about to get f***ed up. Me. That was kind of cheap. Sorry, I gotta pause it because it sounds like it's rocking out. Um, I kind of, I kind of dig the whole documentary kind of like the nature documentary kind of thing that was going on there, but ah, uh, they kind of ruined it with someone's about to get fucked up. Like, I like the subtlety that was in the joke. Anyways. This is this feels weird. What is this new grounds? Honestly, kind of feels like it. Huh? Oh, e. Ah, oh, there's no collision on it. Pew pewer. Can I switch? Okay, I can switch. Hello, hangry fellow. Have you heard that you can hold a you can hold ability, which is I guess is Q. Use your snack ability. It will even heal you. I'm sure it tastes better than a wooden sign. Hit. <laughs> Very new grounds. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to use it now? Oh, okay. Hey, what if you just stay here? There's a duck at the other side, so you don't... So don't use your dash, jump over the water, or it might get scared. Space. What's that? Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, a katana. Oh, that replaces the gun? I see. What's a star? What's the difference? I don't know. I'm gonna go with the star. Oh, gosh. I walked right into that. Uh, it's a roguelike though. That's the thing is I just really don't like roguelikes. I don't like the forced re repeating of content. Uh, increase your damage by 40%, but it decreases your accuracy. Increase your damage by 10%. There's the blood. It is <laughs> more damage, I guess. You know, I've played a few roguelikes on these streams, and none of them really ever caught my attention, right? It's actually a little bit loud, I'll look at that. Um, why would you do that? I can't have you causing this much trouble. I have no other option than show you a stop sign. I've played a few roguelikes uh, on this channel so far now. Uh, even like, you know, like well-developed ones. Um, like there was, um, I see red, but there's only been one that I actually played through a lot and that was actually patch quest. I actually kind of really enjoyed patch quest. Now I never finished it. Um, it really kind of started wearing out its welcome kind of by the end of the game that I just wasn't too interested in actually like finishing the game. It still has that problem of um, 
of uh, uh, roguelikes where it's like in Patch Quest, I had this one super duper really good run where I was just basically invincible and it was great, but I needed to quit. So I had to save and quit and basically end the run early. Um, and then after that run, I could never get a run like that ever again. And it just feels so shitty because it's like, I know I can do better than this, but because of the amount of luck that you have to rely on in these fucking games, I just can't do that. And I don't know, it just, it felt so bad. I don't enjoy that feeling because it's like I've done, I don't know, it, it's, I hate that feeling. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Patch Quest is the only one that I've really enjoyed. I think I wound up playing like 20 hours of the game, although I never actually finished it. Um, I see red wound up kind of just making me rage. Um, and I have a feeling this game is, uh, I don't know, probably not going to be much different. See, I love this shit, but like with anything, you get bored of seeing the same thing in every game. Yeah. Yeah, wait, what part of this game requires your data if it's just a roguelike shooter? Oh, I can imagine it's it's logging a bunch of different information, probably like your computer specs. They did mention that they're logging your IP address as well. Um, so logging probably computer specs, monitor, um, monitor information, um, performance of the game. I don't know, just stuff like that. Um, and then I guess they might be using that data to... I mean, they said that it's to enhance the experience, so they might be looking for performance problems or whatever. And then also, since they have that data, well, they can also just per sell it off to a data broker and make some money on it, too. <laughs> they might not be doing that, but uh, we do live in the year of 2023 where uh, a lot of businesses make their money that way. So, uh... I wouldn't be surprised if they are data brokering your information. Can't go through there. Now prompt, yeah, exactly. This is shiny. Why is it shiny? I can pick it up for a leaf. What is what the fuck is all of this on the side of the screen? Guns or food? I don't know what the difference is. I guess that's the thing with roguelikes too, is they sort of don't expect to teach you a lot of things. They like they don't make them very obvious because they expect you to do multiple runs. So they expect your multiple runs to be about learning what the game is about. So that way they don't have to explain it, you'll figure it out eventually, right? But I don't know if I agree with that. I would like an explanation as to what these are, because this is so abstract, I don't know if I'll ever figure out what those are. Or maybe they don't mean anything, maybe it's just to help you realize that one door is different than the other door? can't read this one, but it increases your max ammo by 10%. This is another thing with, um, roguelikes. I, I, I don't even play that many roguelikes because as I said, eh, not really my favorite genre. But 
even as someone who has not played that many roguelikes, I really kind of get tired of the, like, choose three. I don't know what the alternative is, but I'm also not making a roguelike, so I'm not sitting here brainstorming alternatives to the system. But it's just, I feel like the, the choose three, choose one of three system here, it's just, it's so played out. I'd love to see, like, roguelikes try to do something different. It's like a minor complaint of mine out of, there's, I have a lot of complaints with roguelikes. This is very minor in comparison to a lot of those complaints, but it is one of the things I'd love to see a roguelike uh, do something different to mix it up. Um, increase your fire rate by 60%, but it decreases your damage by 30%, sure. Choose tree. I'll go to the question mark. Who knows what's at the question mark? Did I die? Oh, okay. Well, that was fast. Um. Huh? What? Huh? What was that? Is it showing me these? Hatch? Sure. Oh, this camera thing is weird. Hang on, I think that's a setting. Player. Okay, that feels so much better. Nurture? <laughs> Shoot it. I don't know what I'm doing. F. Um. Oh, okay. Chow Garden, yeah. I'm wondering if this is like... I had totally had that thought when I was looking at these. I wonder if these are like the, the Chow, like, stat... stat boost things? Was this? Uh, getting attention makes them happy. Don't ignore them for too long. These poor babies get me sad, and sad babies can't grow. Okay. Uh. I don't know. I guess I'll do another run. Here we go, you can't re- okay, yeah. When you get hurt, 
it's it sucks too that I, I feel like I, I'm seeing the same uh, buffs. Like I, I've seen the same buff already, right? It makes me feel like there's not that many unique buffs in the game either. When you get hurt, everyone gets hurt. <sighs> Sure, increase damage. my personal data going to tell them to add more buffs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unless they have access to my microphone. Maybe they have access to my microphone. They can hear me complaining about it. But I don't know how many people are going to be speaking going to be talking at their desk about how much they they need more buffs make it more buff Off? Yes, it is. Oh, that's silly. I like. I feel like if you walk over, come on. This is come on. This has like been a staple of games for like forever. Like if you have a weapon and there's another weapon of the same type, when you walk over it, it just automatically adds the ammo to your existing pool. Why do you gotta make me pick it up? We'll go through the gun path? The gun door? Enter the gun door. into that. That's... It's sometimes F and sometimes E? Yeah, like it's E to pick up the... Katana, but I think it's F to open the chest. That's kind of weird. We'll need to double check that. Oh, I forgot to start the timer. Oops. Oh, fuck. I'm just having a bad time with this. N? I'm pushing N. Oh, now it's F. Why was it N before? The stalker is hungry. Bring the little happy ones to me, yes. Crystal takes happiness from babies and I give you permanent upgrades, yes. Please. The bliss stalker is a shady creature that trades permanent upgrades in exchange for happiness. Position your axolotl babies near the magic crystals. Extract their happiness and exchange your harvest for some enticing upgrades. Exchanging smiles for power qualifies as morally gray, right? We'll see. 
How many do I have? None. So how do I give them smiles? So just stay there? Um, okay. Alright, I have... Yay, I did a thing! Yeah, that's right! Now I have four hearts. So, where did my mouse cursor go? This is weird. Now I'm controlling the menu with just the arrow keys, or... Or WASD works, thank god. Dora Ditos drop? Doritos? I think actually that's what it is. I think the Doradito. I think that's 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 a haha -ha, funny reference uh, joke there. I think the because I think that's the money, right? Because they they're little triangles. So haha, -ha, that's a joke. They they look like Doritos, but you can't use the name Doritos because that's a trademark. So it's Doraditos. Healing black tea room can appear up to... I don't know what that is. I guess that's healing. It says healing, so I guess maybe that's what it is. Decrease reload time? Sure. I hate reload time in games, so that sounds good to me. I almost said those look like Dory. Well, there we go. Alright, let's try again. Let's see if I can actually make it to the boss and not fuck up. Have we identified what these symbols mean yet? Oh god, I've already taken damage. We're only at the second room. Carbine? Just do guns again. That's all right, I'm good. I'll stick with the AK and the carbine. The carbine feels very similar to my AK. Oh god, I have one health left. Oh, nope, never mind, I have no health left. Oh, I'm terrible at this. But 
what what do you what do you want? Here, I'm Doe, nice to meet you. I can unlock some items for you if you hand me some of those shiny gems. Purchase powerful new items from vending machines. Expand the arsenal that is accessible to you in combat. Once unlocked through the store, you'll be able to find these items in chests and shops, adding to your survivability. Doors show what chests you get, maybe? Maybe. Oh, is that an Isaac reference? Of course there's an Isaac reference. Proof dash immunity time. I'll do increase fire rate, that sounds pretty good. Is that permanent? Do I just go into the next round with that unlocked? Get tears up in this, what the fuck? I don't know what you're talking about. Carbine feel exactly the same as the AK. I got a cookie. What is the cookie for? Question mark. Well, at least like on other RPG Maker games, at least we we're playing the game. We've actually seen three rounds so far, right? means we've just had regular, consistent gameplay. Can you imagine that? As in the game? Are you enjoying this? Are you being sold on this game? Are you impressed? Oh, we got a shop. Callus? Orange juice. I don't know what orange juice does, though. Well, I don't have enough for it anyway. We'll... Oh, I don't have enough for callus either. Well, I appreciate that there's at least a few uh, Doritos in here. At least get me over that last 
<laughs> that last little bit there. No refunds, pal. No problem. Um, we'll go with the triangle. Doritos. Oh, maybe that's... Maybe you're right. Maybe I will get Doritos from completing this? I kind of dig it. If it was on a super sale, I would consider buying it, but I don't really buy games. You don't really buy games. <laughs> what? Then what fucking games do you play? I think all the good games cost at least some money. <laughs> And again, I know Wrath of Wood plays some fucking weird ass games. It's just who Wrath of Wood is, right? Ah, I finally made it to the boss! Pre itch.io nonsense. Pond Pincer. Oh, it got rid of my gun? What's up with that? That's fucking cheap. Why? Wait, isn't that the whole thing about fucking roguelikes? Is it's like basically the luck of what you find before the boss fight, right? So you get rid of my gun, so it's like it doesn't matter. So the boss literally is a check to see. It's just a wall to check how much a progress block to check how much progress you've made in the game like this the boss is going to be incredibly hard to kill because the best the easiest way to kill it is based on the number of things you've unlocked you can't even rely on like the shit that you you found come on man I, I guess maybe I'd have some buffs or something before I would hope that you would keep that. But why did it get rid of my gun? That's so weird. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna take it with me. Yeah, I don't know. I might be kind of done with this game. I want to make this the last run, and depending on whatever time at I'm at, like that's that's just it. That's the end. Whether I've reached 35 minutes or not, I don't care. I've seen enough. Right, I do think the symbols say what what kind of thing I'll get. I just don't know what the symbols mean. Okay, that's good. Gun, whatever that is, and Doritos. Not hurt.
You want back to check if I change the gun? I don't think so. I think it just got rid of it. Did I run out of ammo? I'm pretty sure I didn't. Alright, I don't know. I I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of done with this game. I'm not really feeling it. Um, I definitely don't enjoy roguelikes, and this is kind of like the worst of... Like, this is everything a roguelike is. Um, to a T. Um... It was bullshit anyways. That didn't really answer the question. I'm pretty sure I still had ammo. I'm pretty sure it does remove your gun whenever you enter the boss. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm gonna refund that one. I, I really... Really wasn't feeling that. that. That is... Like I said, to a T, a roguelike. And that is the kind of game I don't really enjoy. Polish, no. I, I even saw some weird kind of jank in there as well. Like, I saw an enemy who, like, was like, it It didn't know if it wanted the face, like, forward or to the right. It was just, like, flipping back and forth rapidly, just like, I don't know. That's one thing that pops to my mind. Um, there's, like, not enough explanation on different things, which is also going to affect the, the clarity um, accessibility, fine, I'll give them the point for accessibility. Balance feels really fucking cheap, man. I'm gonna say no on the balance. Unique identity, I'll give it a point for the unique identity. Axolotls are cute. There we go. It's a three. So, in my opinion, it's not even worth the money. And in that case, actually, you know what? I think that's a good rule. I think it's a good rule for, for these, uh, commercial segments. If it cannot reach a five on my, uh, pack butt grading system, then it gets a refund. And, yeah, I definitely feel like, uh, I spent money on that, and I don't feel like my money was well spent. So I definitely am going to refund that. So sorry to the developers. I don't like refunding games. Um, but, uh, that game is not good. <laughs> There's problems with it. But that's okay. For the people who watch my streams, like Mr. Rathwood, um, that money will just go right into my Steam wallet, and that means I'll just take that Steam wallet money and put it towards whatever the next game is. So we'll just keep that money rolling until I find a game that I'm willing to keep. It's got to at least reach a 5 on the pack butt scale. Whether I like it or not. If, it, if it's a 5 on the pack butt scale, I won't refund it. That'll be the rule. It's just got to make a 5. Alright. Well. Anyways, like I said, I started this stream off late, an hour later than normal. Um, I do think it's still slightly earlier than normal when I end these streams, but I do want to go ahead and end the stream. I've been tired all day. It's been a stressful week. I had mentioned I, I took a shot before even starting the stream because I was just like, I, I, <laughs> if I don't do it, I'm going to be a fucking party pooper on the stream the whole time. And people are going to be like, why did you even fucking stream in the first place? And it's like, look. <laughs> don't you tell me how to run my life so anyways um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get some rest uh thanks for joining me sorry the stream started later than normal sorry it's only two games but uh we're gonna save that uh 15 that i i spent on axolotl refund it and put it towards something else so anyways, yes, thank you, Wrath of Wood. Peace out. Thanks to everyone who joined. Remember to do the YouTube thing. Like, so comment, and subscribe. Help me get to monetizing this channel. I need the fucking money. Um, 
And yeah, oh, thanks, uh, Mr. Orc. Didn't realize you're even still here. Uh, until next time. Bye.